Hi! Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will demonstrate how to use the Phantom Vibration Monitoring System from Herbist Instruments. Before begin, don't forget to click subscribe button below. Thank you! Ok, let's get started. The first component we'll be using is the Phantom Node Vibration Sensor. We can install it on the motor using bolts or attach it using magnets. Next, we'll use magnets to trigger or wake up the phantom node, and a paper clip to reset the gateway. The gateway device consists of a gateway, antenna, and a power cable connected to an adapter. In this video, I will connect the gateway to the computer using an ethernet cable. For this experiment, I'm using a small three-phase motor with an inverter. When powered on the gateway, connect the gateway to the computer using an Ethernet cable for monitoring purposes. The previous IP address is 169.254.74.147. Using the command prompt on the computer, we attempted to ping the gateway's IP address, but the result shows a failed connection to the gateway. The first step is to reset the gateway. Press the small button using a paper clip through the small hole on the gateway until the logo appears. Go back to the computer, access the Wi-Fi network starting with Phantom, enter the password, consisting of the number 8 repeated 8 times, and wait until connected to the Phantom Wi-Fi network. Next, open an internet browser and go to 192.168.4.1, which will open the gateway configuration page. Check the static IP configuration box, set the IP address for the gateway, and in the monitor IP address field, enter the computer's IP address. Afterward, click on Save Settings. Once saved, you'll see a notification that the settings have been saved, and the gateway will restart. Return to the gateway and plug in the Ethernet cable to the gateway. After the restart, on the gateway's display, you will see the set IP address for the gateway, and the monitor's IP address, which is the computer's IP address used for monitoring the vibration sensor. In the command prompt, we can see that the gateway's IP address has been detected within the network. Additionally, we can ensure the connection to the gateway by using the ping command to the gateway's IP address to check whether the connection is good or not. After installing EI Monitoring, open the EI Monitoring application. When running it for the first time, we need to configure the database. Choose the local database option, then select the existing database, namely the monitor log, SDF file, and click OK. To power on or wake up the phantom node, we need to trigger it using a magnet. Place the magnet in front of the hole until the LED lights up. Okay. 
In EI Monitoring, click on Start Service. After a while, you'll see information indicating that the gateway has been connected along with the connected phantom nodes. You can view the ID of the connected phantom node, which corresponds to the ID displayed on the QR code on the phantom node body. Next, after installing the Digivibe software, open the Digivibe software to begin receiving data from the gateway. Next, set up the database in Digivibe software. In this video, I'm aligning the database used with EI Monitoring. We can first check the database used in EI Monitoring. Then, return to Digivibe, and select the location of the database in the local database, namely the monitorlog.sdf file. The next step is to add a phantom node in the Digivibe software. On the command ribbon, select phantom, then choose wizard. On the phantom management page, select add phantom. Scan the QR code on the phantom node to add it, and follow the subsequent instructions. For the data sending interval, choose a 10 minute interval for sending data from the phantom node. Next, in the configuration section, create machine data starting with the company, area, machine name, and select point 1 as the measurement point on that machine. Then, click save. Click the refresh button on the database tab. You'll see a list of machines that you've added at the bottom of the database section. In EI monitoring, ensure that the service is running. To check if the added phantom node is connected to Digivibe, go to the phantom tab, select status, and then click the all button. You will see a list of added phantom nodes. If you observe a table with phantom data showing a negative temperature, and a signal strength is zero, this indicates that the phantom node is not connected to Digivibe yet. One of the ways to address this problem is by installing the Phantom Manager app on a smartphone, whether it's an Android, or iPhone. Open the Phantom Manager app on your smartphone, then select Node Update. Scan the QR code on the phantom node, and trigger the phantom using the magnet. If there's an option for an update, proceed with the update. Once the update is complete, return to the Digivibe software. Now, let's recheck the status of the phantom node to confirm if it's connected. In the status devices window, click on all. Now, we should see data such as battery status, signal strength, and other information, indicating that the phantom node has successfully connected to Digivibe. On the machine, select point 1. You should be able to see incoming data for parameters such as horizontal, vertical, and axial measurements. Digivibe will receive data at intervals of every 10 minutes, as per the previously set data sending interval. So 
Certainly, after gathering data from the Phantom node, you can explore various features available in Digivibe to analyze the collected vibration data. Some features worth exploring include Spectral analysis View the frequency spectrum of machine vibrations to identify dominant frequencies and potential issues. Trend monitoring Monitor changes over time in vibration values to detect patterns or trends that might indicate changes in machine condition. Trending analysis Track data over time to understand the development of machine condition. Alarms and notifications Set specific threshold limits for vibration or other parameters to receive notifications if values exceed the set limits. Data history and storage Review past data to analyze long-term changes and compare machine conditions over specific periods. Visualization and graphs Use graphs and data visualization to understand trends, fluctuations, or patterns present in vibration data. Exploring these features will help gain deeper insights into machine conditions and aid in diagnosing issues and planning necessary maintenance. To assess the severity of vibration data, you can review the vibration severity matrix referring to ISO 10816. This matrix provides guidelines and criteria for evaluating the vibration levels of industrial machines. ISO 10816 sets standards for assessing vibration severity and rotating machinery based on factors such as velocity, acceleration, and displacement. By comparing the measured vibration levels against the ISO 10816 standards, you can determine the severity of the vibrations and whether they fall within acceptable limits or indicate potential issues that require attention or further investigation. Thank you for watching. In the next video, I'll demonstrate how to display vibration data on the Node Red dashboard. See you in the next video.